Hello, and welcome again to another segment of Casa Cares. My name is James Washington, and this is another opportunity where we try to bring you informative new organizations to our community that's going to assist you as well as me. Today, we have an opportunity to meet with Gwen Singletary, who is the executive director of a program, and she'd like to share with you all the benefits of this particular program. So without any further ado, we have Gwen Singletary. Well, thank you so much, James and Casa. I appreciate the opportunity. Um, my name is Gwendolyn Singletary, and I'm the Executive Director of the Edgeman Foundation, the Black Bear and Integral Community of Columbia, an old community that uh, we are uh, proud to be a part of, and a lot of great people come from that community, actually. Um, with the community, the Edgeman Foundation has been established in the last seven years, and it's about educating and equipping the community um, to be able to be better citizens, to be able to take advantage of the opportunities that are out there for them, whether it's education, financial, um, or health care, um, helping our community overall to rebuild. Uh, we have a great program that we have uh, partnered with City Year and Children's Trust. And that program is called Strengthening Families. And we all know how important the family unit is for not only the community, but for our country and the world. And this program is to help families to better build their skills in communication, um, to help prevent or deter negative behavior, uh, to be able to uh, develop a better relationship with the children overall. It's considered a parenting class, if you will, but I think it goes a lot deeper than that because this is one of the few programs I have seen where they have segments for the parents as well as for the children. So we're teaching the parents some skills, some things that may help them. Um, we're also teaching the children the same thing in a different way, and we let them come back together and practice new things. Um, it's a 14-week program. We ask that we do everything in our power to help the families to complete each 12 of those weeks. Um, we know that that's a commitment. But we try to make it as palatable as possible for them. So we try to overcome all the objections you may have to coming out. It's once a week. And uh, what we do is if you need to, um, it is targeted to parents. And I say that, let me step back a little bit. Let me say that parent thing is real loose. I should say guardian. Because you can be a grandparent, an uncle, an aunt, a cousin, a big brother that know a child that needs this help. Or you yourself will be better in terms of helping young people through an eligible program. Um, we uh, target children between the ages of 6 and 11. So if a family wants to come to the program and use that family unit very loosely, like I said, we make it easy for you to do that. We provide a full meal for you, all your family. So if it's you got uh, children that are younger than 6 or than 11, you bring them too, and we give you a full meal. I've heard this concept of the full meal. Why is that so important to the program? Well, I think it's important because we want to make sure the parents is comfortable that they are giving their children, we're giving their children what they need to get with their own children. And we also know that, unfortunately, there's some instances where that's one of the few meals that child would get or that family would get that day in terms of whole meal. We also want to overcome this issue of obesity. And while everybody knows sausage and pizza and, and sandwiches are good, we really are in, uh, just really, really in, um, stressed ourselves to give them vegetables and healthy, balanced meals. So that's why that full meal thing is very important for us. Tell us, what is the mission statement of what Strengthening Families is all about? Strengthening Families is to, what, just what it says, to strengthen the family unit overall, to build better relationships, and to be able to, and the benefit of this program too, it helps you to relationship with your children, it helps you relationship with your spouses, or your, your mates, it helps you relationships in your business world as well. The principles that are taught there are to help you have better relationships overall. Unfortunately, sometimes a lot of our family members come from a lot of dysfunction. Mm -hmm. How do you address the dysfunction sometimes between parent and child, and sometimes between parents and themselves? Well, that's one good thing about the program. It does those sort of things. It helps you and gives you tools. And what we say is that what we provide cannot possibly be right for everyone. We give you options and alternatives and ways to look around what is going on now. You may have something in your house that's working very well. We have something that's working kind of well, or something that's working at all. We give you ways to make that, maybe look at it a different way a different idea, a different option of how you communicate better with your child, your spouse, your mate, you know, other family members overall. Um, the tools have been um, tried and true. It's a nationally recognized program, so no one went in their basement and swore something up. This has been tested, okay. and it's a nationally known program called Strengthening Families. Okay, actually, what type of numbers have you guys been developing this year with this program and your success? We've been this is our third session of the program, and we've had pretty much um, um, about 80 to 90% rate of graduation. Like I said, we do everything in our power to make sure a family graduates. If we have to come back and do maybe sessions, our sessions are from six to eight once a week. But if you need us to do something for you on an off night 
or in the middle of the day to get you through this program. I am blessed to say we have facilitators and um, uh, grant, grant, a grantor who's willing to do sit, um, a children's trust and city are willing to do whatever it takes to help you get this information. Okay. I understand you say that 12 weeks of graduation. Mm -hmm. What is a positive outcome after graduation? Oh, my, it's been great. I mean, we do a major graduation for them. Um, let me tell you a couple things about the session so you'll see how we build your graduation. Okay. At the session, like I said, we fill a full meal, and that meal is for the entire family. You have to bring someone younger than six, older than 11. We feed the entire family. After that, we go into our sessions for the youth and for the parents. If you, the child that you brought to the session, perhaps, like I said, is too young or too old, we have people there to babysit, to help with homework, um, to mentor. So we make sure the whole family gets an experience. Okay. We come back together and kind of watch you practice what you've learned. Okay. Every time you come, in addition to having a full meal, we give you some kind of prize or incentive for coming. We keep encouraging you to come back. If you don't have transportation, we help you there too. If you need us to pick you up, we have buses to pick you up. If you have a car, but you know, things are a little tight, we give you a gas card. When you get ready to graduate, after all this time, this loving perfection. And it's interesting because the families become families. That's right. The families in the session becomes friends and keep in touch with each other and talk. And well, so they kind of become a sport group with each other, which I think is beautiful. Um, but the, we've seen after graduation, we do a huge, major upscale meal. We have a speaker come in. We give a much larger gift at the end of graduation. People get up and get a chance to do an affirmation. And they're able to say this to their family members, to us, whoever they want to say. And we've heard things like, I don't beat my children. I don't yell at my children anymore. Um, what you going to do with me next? I don't want to stop coming. Can I come back? Um, folk are really enjoying the opportunity, especially the parents, to talk and have somebody listen to them and, and bounce with their ideas and not only interact with our facilitators but the other family that we have there as well. We've heard so many positive responses and a number of our families now we're seeing are parents, are grandparents and even great grandparents. Because of the economic situation and things that are going on, they're oftentimes the primary caregiver for these, these children. Um, so we're seeing that as well and they need the outlet. But we've had some remarkable stories told to us about what they've learned, how they adjusted, and that sort of thing. And by the way, I guess one of the most important things is the program is totally free. There's no economic issue with this. You don't have to have a certain income level. We have people from all incomes in this program. We have people in all situations in the program. We have families who say, you know, my kids, we get along with really well, but I want to make sure it stays that way. They have no physical problems. We have families that say, you know what? I think I might see my child's going to different school next year. I see a little difference in his personality. I want to get above this. I want to see what it's all about. Um, there are other parents who actually say, I have problems. I need help. And they're in the program. You know, we do have some children, people that are court-ordered. So we have a large group of uh, desires and needs, and they meld together so well in these sessions. Like I said, most of them, they change phone numbers. They keep the friendship going. They become a base support for each other. Wow. Let me ask you a question. What makes your program so successful? I got to tell you, I think the program is so successful because it's so needed. And I think that our approach of having something for the parents and the children at the same time. Most programs have something for parents or the children. This one has both of them. And I think we really take care of the entire unit of the family to make sure that parent and guardian doesn't have to worry and stress. We take those young kids. If you've got a three or four-year-old, we take that child and, 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 and go over to another room and we play games and that kind of thing. That gives that parent a respite for that hour. If it's nothing but an hour, it gives them a respite to talk, to share with others, and not have to worry about the other people with us. Um, our <clears throat> partnership with uh, City, City Year and Children's Trust is remarkable. They're remarkable people. And I have to say, we have some of the best facilitators that we could possibly have. We have a good group of men and women. I think it's important to say we have men because that's needed in a lot of homes that's not many men. And they have the backgrounds and the heart. And I gotta re-stress that part. They have the heart for the program. Yes, everyone in that program is in um, education background, social work, uh, juvenile justice. Everyone in our program, all our facilitators are. And more importantly that they have the heart for the program. And that I think honestly I can say is probably the biggest component and our biggest um, uh, in to success. Wow. Okay. Oftentimes, a lot of our families are in crisis. Mm -hmm. By the time they come to our, our radar, there's some type of event that's taking place that mm -hmm. really panics mm -hmm. a lot. Mm -hmm. What is your approach to a family that's in crisis? Well, we, first of all, we tell people right away. 
um, when you come into the program. This is Vegas. This ground right here is Vegas. So what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. That's our motto in there. And we're able to get them to share a little bit more with us. We usually have an idea of what's happening from our referrals oftentimes. So sometimes they just walk in and they tell us, but we let them know you have a safe haven here. And we are willing to keep your secrets, we'll share with you whatever. And then we have in our own also based on uh, our facilitators, our network, other resources and needs we to help get people. We've had families who, you know, really had some problems in terms of um, no shelter. We help them in terms of finding a place to live. We help them in terms of food. We help them in terms of hope for their children. But that's part of being a part of the foundation, is the foundation, our mission to empower the community. So the foundation has resources, and then our partners have resources, and we actually were able to really help people in a number of areas, like I said, from housing to clothing, that we were able to get who are in crisis, and getting them to the right help that they need. Now, you may have mentioned that your parent, your brother could be considered to be a parent facilitator. Mm -hmm. Is it predicated on both parent and child participation to be part of the program? Yes, it is. Can a parent come by themselves with a child in foster care? No, at this program, you have to have both um, parents with you, um, a, a parent and a child. That's that. That's the um, the um, the uh, criteria of the grant. Okay. Um, so it has to have a parent and a child. And like I said, we are dealing with children between the ages of 6 and 11. Um, this program is done um, for children older, but our grant is for the children between 6 and 11. So at least one child, because other children, we actually, like I said, we do things for them as well to help them. We wanted to really make that a little more enriching for them. We thought that, because oftentimes we had um, children that were older than 11, um, five or six of them, and we said, okay, we gotta do something with these children, because we can't do this on our own. So but from, um, you know, uh, mentoring with them, to playing games with them, just letting them talk, to um, getting the parents to really have a, a team to uh, sex prevention class talk to them. We brought other folk in and did other seminars for those children to we really try to make sure because it's kind of difficult if you have, uh, in my mind, you have the parent and the child between six and eleven on the same accord, but the older child is not. That can be destructive and divisive. So we've gone our way to help to facilitate those children getting them rich and rich as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let me ask you a question though. The interaction that the parent and the child have, is mm -hmm. there a correlation between academics and these children through your children's program? Yes. Um, yeah, in fact, unfortunately, yes. Generally, um, low self-esteem, low academics, problems at home, all run together. Okay. Generally, with an open um, uh, family situation, uh, good you know, interaction with the family. And I'm not going to say loving because you still can love your child, but you guys can't communicate. Um, so even that good communication and all of that, you can see better. Um, all the time we set parents who are just at wit's end with their children, no one's talking, everybody's frustrating. We see the low self-esteem, we see the poor grades, we see how parents actually affect their children's self-esteem in such a huge way, such a huge way, and parents don't, don't necessarily think they even do. Um, but you know, if you're not interacting with your child, if you're not making your child feel special, if you're not rewarding the good things with your child, if you're not, um, if you're just harping on the bad things all the time. Um, if you're not spending any time with the child. And that's something we really teach that piece of spending time. I think our first couple lessons about spending time with your child. Remembering to do that. Life is so crazy and nobody's beating your parents up or guardians up. But life is so crazy. You're coming, you're working, you're trying to make ends meet, you're trying to prepare for the child. You're trying to, you know, get yourself a, a new promotion. Trying to find, it's just so much going on. And we try to just bring it back to base. Remember, it's important you spend time with your child. It's important you spend time with your child individually. Each child needs some time by themselves one-on-one. -on -one. Um, opposed to, okay, you think that group thing is going to be good. And that's good at certain times. We need to have, we try to reinstate the family meetings. We try to um, talk to them about having some time that you and your family talk about opt opportunities for you to do, how you go on vacation, if it's a problem with transportation, if everybody got something going on, how you solve those problems. We're bringing children in to help them understand what the challenges are and help you solve the problems so we try to make sure that spend that time and how that time is spent, we see the correlation between good behavior, good grades, good self-esteem, um, getting those kind of things in place. Great. Okay. Now, going back to my question of uh, families in crisis, yes. I'm just imagining a program that has eight, nine, ten families in them, mm -hmm. and say half of them are in crisis. Mm -hmm. How does that disrupt the type of a continuity for other families who may not be in crisis? Well, we, the way we do the program, we had a good incident that um, on, on last night. Um, we try to, and our facilitators, like I said, I'm so excited about them because they are really well trained. And we are all trained. And um, they know how to facilitate in such a way that we keep them on track with what we're trying to do. 
if you have a challenge, um, we take you out and do that evening. Um, so there's some people who have to do it before the session starts. You can come a little early, let's do the stuff with you. Um, after the session, we do the stuff with you. But while we're in session, we try to keep it on track for the whole group. And then individually pull out the ones who need special help because we do have to keep on track. Oftentimes, when you have these sessions, uh, the, the, the participants want to get to a subject beforehand. And we have to kind of keep them safe because they're excited. And that's a good thing. And But it's my, my situation. We have to teach them the steps to get to those things. And one of the first steps, like I said, is, you know, understanding who you are, understanding your child's personality, and spending time with your child, and how you spend time with them. That builds everything else from how you avoid them, how you give them um, discipline for negative behavior, how you ignore behavior. All those deal build up in one. So it's important to keep them on track of how it all builds and see how it all comes together. Unfortunately, again, some of the population we deal with our family members who may have issues with substance abuse mm -hmm. or domestic violence mm -hmm. or even prescription drugs. Does your program address these yes. subjects? Yes, we have a, a nice session on drug abuse um, and drugs. And um, people, thank God, have been very honest with us about their situation, what they do. And the children are very honest about us, uh, what's going on, what they do. Um, we do talk about the abuse of uh, physical abuse. We have a session on physical abuse, especially in the um, negative behavior situation. Let's have the section do about your behavior, um, how you deal with that behavior, and how easy it is to lose your temper, how you deal with stress. We deal with all those aspects, and those stress things lead to sometimes verbal or physical abuse. Um, so we, we deal with all of those hard questions, drugs, physical abuse, um, uh, domestic violence, we deal with all that in the program as well. Now, how would you gauge someone who would say has an active drug problem in terms of are they continuing with the use? Well, we try to give them some help. We try to get them. We find, because oftentimes people like that are um, referred to us, okay. and so we will deal with their referral agency and deal with that. If they're not referred to us, and we have to find out there's a problem, um, we are a reporting area. We do have to report things, okay. so we find out we are bound by law to report. We will do that reporting, and we will even help them get to a facility, uh, a, a organization or entity that will help them with their problem. Okay. Now, is there any type of interaction between early return agency in terms of developing a treatment plan, or is usually your program to put the treatment plan together? No, absolutely not. We're not total treatment plan. We hope to element in the treatment plan. Okay. So we have relationships with in, uh, uh, agencies like Hope Yourself, CASA, mm -hmm. um, and, um, relationships with the Department of Social Services, DSS, um, a DJJ. Um, and some other entities um, that we um, we walk, talk with, walk with, they refer folk to us. When you refer uh, a family to us, we have a form that has been approved, which gives that entity, whether it be DSS or DJJ, an update on how that person's doing. We do it every four weeks. So we do it three times by the end of the program. And we tell them if they attended, how often they attended, they participate, you see them changing their behavior. So those are things, and so those uh, case workers, if you will, or referrals, are able to utilize that as they see how that person's doing, they're doing their case and recommendation plan going forward. But we do help them while they're in our sessions. We also invite any of those caseworkers or any of those entities who would like to come and just watch, see what we do, how we do to watch that family, they're welcome to come as well. Okay. Yeah. You may mention that there is no fee for the client. No fee. That being said, can anyone make a referral to your program? Anyone will get a referral and we would love to have referrals. We want to help as many people as possible in this program. And on this program, we're actually going to have the referral form on air for those who view the program Great. and see. So, so if someone wants to get in contact with you, how would they be able to do so? I can be reached. My direct dial number at the Edgewood Foundation is 803-252-7544. Once again, 803-252-7544. My email address is G Singletary at edgewood dash foundation.org not underscore dash so it's g singletary at edgewood dash foundation.org and is there a website also there's a website www.edgewoodfoundation.org okay. well, tell us something what makes your program unique i think the program is unique in the fact it is a full solution it's a full package we have overcome the objections from a family participation um, we make it free for them. We try to, um, the, 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 the people that we have involved in the system, like I said, it's a nationally recognized program, 
and I think we covered, I think we've done an excellent job of covering the needs, the wants, and the obstacles to being a part of this program. Yeah, outstanding. I'm hearing that theme about that family meal, mm -hmm. the very pivotal points of this program. Mm -hmm. Why is that so important? Well, you know, I, 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 I have an advertising background. I'm an advertising marketing person. I was involved with that family table concept. So I know statistically how important the family table is in terms of people talking and sharing and learning and, 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 and communicating and being attached. And we do a little extra at the, our site. Like I said, it's all over the country, but we do a little extra because I think that that time with your family is so important. So we have tables set up, round tables. We decorate those tables like you would at home. Every table has a tablecloth, not plastic. I iron tablecloths every week. We have tablecloths and every table, centerpieces, salt and pepper shakers, remnant of what it would be at home. Yeah. Our facilitators eat with the families. I do not allow them to sit in the corner and make plans or be on their phones. Um, that's a no-no. They eat with the family right. and talk with the family, interact with the family. If the family's not accustomed to mm -hmm. that concept, they try to help them get accustomed to talking during that time and, and asking how their day went and find out what's wrong, with, what's up with their children and what's happening with their children. That's a perfect time to do that. And so we try to emulate that concept during our dinner hour. And that's so important. Like I said, we need it because it's a good place to do it, but we need it also because it helps the family overcome a rejection to come because they have to worry about feeding their family. And that really is a big part of our program. We make a special effort to make it pretty in there. We make a special effort to have the people feeling warm and welcome. Our facilitators are there. When they walk in the door, they're greeted by us and interacting and it's after two or three weeks we know each other we start hugging each other the kids run up to you and it gets to really be a family thing but it all starts with that family meal and yeah. uh, we try to really build on that so even to just something like table manners and etiquette absolutely absolutely yeah. absolutely outstanding yeah well again folks there you have it thank you for another opportunity to visit us at Cost and Cares we had the pleasure to speak with Gwen Singletary make sure you stay tuned to watch for her follow-up information and please if you think you know someone who may utilize her services Give her a call. This is James Washington with Richmond County Council Cares. Until next time.